with this ongoing debate and I think we've all got to have sympathy with people in horrible countries where there's persecution there's mad regimes and all the rest of it of course we have sympathy that this is being gamed internationally this is being deliberately used now flooding the UK with migrants from all sorts of countries and most countries are more rubbish than the West that's just sort of you know how the cookie crumbles we're catching um, up fast though we are catching up fast but um, the difficulty with all of this is nobody seems to want to be the one who wants to make the difficult decision, who wants to say, look, this can't go on, um, that, you know, we've got to turn a boat around, we've got to fully secure our borders, and actually, you know, when it comes to granting asylum, we're going to have to tighten up who can get it and who can't, because actually, if you decided that everyone who was from a country that persecuted uh, homosexuality, it's about three quarters of the world right now, from a country that is uh, incredibly impoverished, that's probably about two thirds of the world, from a country that's got a bit of a dodgy regime that doesn't like um, you know, political opponents, that's probably now about one third of the wow, world. you're really you know, doing your stats. Basically, uh, I'm just yeah. doing my estimates, but I'm just, I don't think they're probably hyperbolic either. Yeah. If we were to say, well look, these are the conditions by which you can claim asylum, then frankly, three quarters of the world can come knock on our yeah. door and say we deserve to live here. Yeah. I'm glad you finally come in, Charlie. I was wondering where you'd got to. Yes, yes, just navigating London's public transport. Oh, I know after, that one. You know. I know that one well, my da my darling. Right, Charlie Downs is here from the Centre for Migration Control. I mean, what what do these statistics tell us, really? That basically now that you've got um, a triple is, the number of asylum oxymoron? claims on the what migration control. At this moment, it is. In this moment, it very yeah. much is. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't resist. That you've got uh, three, three, triple the number of uh, asylum claims um, than the previous year. And actually, it's got a 58% grant rate. And actually, what we do know is that when most people are then rejected, they then appeal it, and they mm. appeal it multiple yeah. times. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what is currently 58% could well shoot up far above that. And when I looked at other countries, not all, Germany seems to be the most um, generous when it comes to you come and ask for asylum, we're just going to give it to you. But far they're not so kind. Mm. France only yeah. grants uh, asylum at about a 25% yeah. rate, which probably explains why so many people are queuing up in yeah, Dunkirk well, to come here. Angela Merkel started all this. I know she did. Don't get me mm. started Angela yeah. Merkel. Yeah, exactly. Charlie. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody expected Keir Starmer to be a particularly impressive Prime Minister. I mean, given that only 20% of the population actually want him to be in the position he is. But the <laughs> the speed with which he has torched his reputation in you know over the last few weeks is actually quite staggering. Because I think a lot of people thought that Keir Starmer was going to be a kind of return to a very dry and managerial style of government where it's you know the adults are back in the room and we just get on with things and people stop thinking about politics but actually the opposite has been the case everybody you know i think the country's actually being radicalized by what we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis just today there's been a stabbing at chessington world adventures i mean how, how much longer can we go on like this it's absurd well chessington world of adventures the kiddie right. theme park just in surrey that's right it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes yes oh. so so these numbers that have come out today about asylum applications being granted is just i mean it's just the next in a long line of asylum um, failures by the government, whether it's Conservative or Labour. This is the trend that we've seen for decades at this point. Now, uh, the, the statistic you gave was 58%. The statistic, statistic I have is 79% approval rating what? for applications for asylum. But there's a number of questions we need to ask, I think. For first of all, asylum seekers cost us four, uh, five and a half billion pounds every year, right? That's money that could be going to housing homeless veterans, could be going to, uh, you know, subsidising energy because it's so expensive. What, any number of things, because people in this country are really struggling at the moment, but instead it's going on putting up people who ultimately shouldn't be here, people who are criminals because they've come here in an illegal manner. You know, it is a law that if you come mm. to the country through, you know, not through the proper channels, you're breaking the law. It's just a definitional thing here. Um, and as you say today, 63,000 is the figure that we've got. That's a hell of a lot of people. You know, That's and these are people. people. These are people who aren't vetted. We don't know who these people right. are, um, and we don't know what they're going to do. I mean, you know, it's 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 it makes me worried. And and furthermore, how can we call ourselves a safe country, an asylum country, if we can't even protect our own citizens, our own children from crime? You know, I mean, I need not bring up the Southport stabbings, but how can we possibly call ourselves a safe country when this sort of thing is happening on an almost daily basis? So, yeah, no, indeed. Well, you know, I, I wrote. I, I write a. Uh, regular weekly column for a sister channel, Sky News, the wonderful Sky News Australia. Mm. And uh, in my column this week, I said, you know, I, nobody's mentioned this. It's strange. Kamala Harris <laughs> and Keir Starmer are the only two leaders, one potential, of a country that were previously prosecutors putting people in mm -hmm. jail. 
Nobody said that, so I used my A, my, my artificial intelligence software to check that. And indeed, there has been nobody that's led any country in the world who previously prosecuted and put people in jail. And you have to be a particular type of person to Absolutely. be a prosecutor, a very authoritarian but, personality. Definitely. But I said, you know, the other side of this could be mm. that if he moved in the right direction, he may be able to reduce crime in this country and right. set an example so, for you know what? other countries I'm glad to do you the said same that. thing. Let me just finish. He may be able to reduce crime. He may even be able to introduce some civility. I don't want him to go mm. so far mm. as imposing on freedom of speech or taking anyone's rights mm. away, which people say is happening in the last two weeks, that's for sure. But he does have the opportunity to put right this country, which the Tories have made such a mess mm. of. He could even be, I said in here the other day in this studio with people laughing at me, he could. He has an opportunity to be Churchillian. You're yeah. totally right. If I may, Alex, very quickly. I feel like I can just go home, quite frankly. You carry on. There's, there's, a, there's a point here. There's here a point here. A number of people have made this point, but it doesn't really break through to the mainstream, which is what people need to understand about the difference between conservative, the Conservative government and now the Labour government mm -hmm. is the Conservatives were having to fight tooth and nail at every turn to actually get the civil service to do anything. That was their main problem. It was, it was you know, a lack of leadership, ultimately. With Labour, because of how the civil service was set up, ultimately being a creation of the Blairite New Labour government uh, from 1997. When Labour are in power, it's like they have the keys to the machine that makes the machine work. And so it's a choice on Keir Starmer's part to not actually fix this stuff, because if they wanted to, they could. Yeah, so this is something that I was um, discussing just yesterday, actually, that sometimes a normally left-wing government can get away with doing a lot more right-wing things. And there mm. were things that came yeah. out from the Home Office yesterday in their announcement that, to me, seemed to be a beginning framework of stuff, that if a government under a Conservative leadership had tried to propose, all the sort of weirdos of placards would have come out. Yeah. One being a massive expansion of these immigration return centres. Yeah, we want yeah. to deport even more people. And when you look at deportations, actually, historically from this country, the last time we had a successful rate of deportations was under the Labour government of Tony Blair. Yeah, so, like you're saying, they might have the right keys to the they machine, might, they might. a civil service that will work alongside yeah, but, them. But please don't make the excuse for the dreadful performance of the Tory government just the civil service. No, that's quite You true. just have to watch Fishy Rishi in his photo op saying things that were unbelievably, shall I say, unproductive. Mm. You just have to watch Bates Motel Hunt out there telling us he's given us a tax cut when taxes have actually gone up. I mean, they lied, they gaslighted every day for year after year. They supported the idiotic Andrew Bailey and his 14 interest rate rises, which did nothing to reduce and simply prolonged our non-consumer driven mm. inflation. They all by themselves, without the help of, uh, of the yes ministers, managed to screw up this country like no one before them, which is why they got the worst result in, is it 100 years or right. 200 yes. years? Well, don't misunderstand me. I'm Do not giving it. Go, guys, guys, calm down. You're not just down in the pub having a little debate <laughs> yeah, between we're, yourselves. We're, we're going to sort this, this all out. I know, I can tell. We're but getting this is, excited. This it's is being a, around right. you. This, well, you're an energy that makes this happen. I excited by me. You barely know I'm sitting here right now. No, you're an <laughs> energy. Show. You're a catalytic energy. Well, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear it. If my we show, put you in number 10, things would change if you just sat there and smiled. Well, thank you. Yeah. Right. So, if I may. Oh, um, blimey. <laughs> sorry, Alex. You may. One last just, point. You know what? I'm just going to have a. One I'm last point. Take it easy. Tea. Yeah, have Thanks. a cup of tea. All right. I'm call, not giving the Tories. Oh, well, see how he's doing. Right. I'm not giving the Tories a free pass here. I mean, I want okay. to be clear about that. But what has to be understood is the civil service is, you know, the manager, the actual machinery of the managerial state that governs this country is institutionally left-wing. Therefore, if the government, the nominal government, the Labour government, is left-wing, then it's more likely that they're going to be able to get them to do what they the want to do. The problem is that the Tories were left-wing. They aren't even well, that's conservative. That's also true. Right. That's also true. But a lot of these people are trapped in this just mind prison of thinking that yeah. the only two options are Tories and Labour. But actually, they're both as left-wing yeah. as each other. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, Alex, your turn. Well, thank you. Um, at, at least I'm getting paid more than you guys right now for doing this. Uh, I, you know, I should just do this every night, get yeah. you guys here and take the money and uh, is, is I didn't know, do some cryptic happen? crosswords. Yeah. I'm beginning to devise a new scheme. It might be good for my mental health. Um, what's interesting, I'm going to go back to the actual blimmin' story. Yes, right? let's, let's do That'd it. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Talking about the people who've come over in the boats. And do you know what the biggest nationality was making channel boat crossings over last year tell me 
The Vietnamese. Yes, I, yeah. I did think right. that was the answer, but so I didn't want to get So you it tell me, you point to me where the war is in Vietnam. Hmm. It isn't. And one thing I think that people need to get real about is all these people going, oh, well, isn't it terrible? All these people are asylum seekers and refugees, and then what do they do? The sort of bleeding heart, Have middle you... class women. And they go down to the nail bars and get their mannies done, their mani pedis, by a load of enslaved Have women. Have you seen the from queues? Vietnam. Have you seen the queues outside the restaurants that say Vietnamese street food? They need more of them. <laughs> well, no, I just think it's rather astonishing that Vietnam has topped the chance of the people coming over uh, in the channel crossings. I mean, the, the Vietnamese were the sort of the preferred routes. I think it used to be back of lorries. Are they um, north or but, south Vietnamese? But we know that... I don't know. I don't know them personally. Well, that would make a big difference. If they were north... They'd be escaping a, a, a difficult regime. Mm. But when but when you look at there's a brilliant website, I often mention it, it's uh, called the Organised Crime Index, and I recommend everybody goes on to that website because it comes up this amazing heat map of uh. the globe and you can sort of zoom into a country and it looks at all of the organised crime in that country and where the gangs are coming from and most organised crime in most countries are done by foreign criminal gangs and uh, it's very clear uh, which particular elements of um, uh, illicit behaviour that uh, Vietnamese people are getting involved in over here, and it tends to be cannabis farms. Mm, right. right, anyway, on that note, uh, thank you ever so much for coming in, Charlie.